Welcome to Wargroove. In this episode, we're going to be going over a tier list, effectively ranking the different commanders that have dropped in the DLC. A lot of commanders have been buffed, nerfed, moved around. We've got some new ones. Let's see where they all stand and how they stack up. All right, first things first, let's talk about the three commanders who dominated the competitive scene in the previous meta. We're talking 1.3 before Double Trouble came out. Those three were Caesar, Nuru, and Tenry, and they were all considered very, very good for one very important reason, trebuchets. That's right, they all had great interactions with trebuchets. Nuru could make them, Tenry could move them around, and Caesar had the ability to make them take another turn. Trebs, 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 it was all about those trebs. Now, as a result, these three commanders were considered the top three, the trinity of commanders. However, Tenry stood above them all with a fast charge groove that had crazy versatility. It was an escape, an assassinate, it had long range, it had everything. The problem is Tenry got hit hard with the nerf bat. Trebuchets just aren't as much around anymore for Tenry to move. Additionally, Tenry at slow charge now doesn't get groove when she needs it, and when she does get it, she can't waste it on an escape or a single target assassinate. She really has to make it count, kind of sit on it, maybe use it in one critical moment and hope it's not too late, and then once you use it, it's gone. So unfortunately, Tenry has been moved to the B tier. She's dropped from S all the way down to B because slow charge just really doesn't suit a high versatility groove. Slow charge is really better for big impact grooves. So because of the change in the meta, the change in her groove charge speed, and the change in, quite frankly, her groove just doesn't work with the groove charge speed, let alone it's slower now. Tenry is B tier. All right, Caesar, there's not a lot to say about Caesar. Caesar is still more or less just as good as they were before. We're dumping him in that S tier bucket. Now keep in mind that Caesar is not the easiest of commanders to use, so you might not see him be excellent until you get a little bit better with the game. Speaking of commanders that are hard to use, one of the hardest commanders to use is Nuru. Her ability to make any unit at double the price comes with a cost, pardon the pun. You really have to gold save, strategize, and time it well. It's fast charge, and it's insanely versatile. You can make any unit that you have the ability to build. Because of this, and because Nuru can make a treb, even if trebs are difficult to move around on the map, she is one of the three who can still do trebuchet cheese. Suddenly make a treb out of nowhere and have it attack a critical target. For this reason, and because of her insane versatility, and the fact that the map meta has shifted to exposed strongholds, making Nuru's ability to cheese or backdoor a stronghold very strong, has made her into one of the top S-tier commanders in this patch. Alright, let's talk about some other powerful commanders. Dioda was always good. Dioda was good before the DLC came out, but they weren't played a lot because Dioda is a little bit hard and wasn't quite that good. However, now Dioda is incredible. Every time Dioda grooves, or should I say dashes during the groove, the damage increases, and Dioda is fast charge. This means that you can do damage to units all the way across the map, and then get groove and do it all over again. You can appear anywhere, you can escape, you can attack. It's so useful and does so much damage. In fact, I, I think Shu made a video to prove that the damage is infinitely scaling, where Shu grooves through like 100 sedges and the damage goes up to like 999, it's insane. Alright, Yoda is without a doubt S tier. Now, who else is really, really good? Wolfar. Let's talk about Wolfar. Wolfar is sort of like the new Tenry, although Wolfar's groove makes the unit expend its turn and damages it if you use it on one of your own. So it can't really be used to trebuchet cheese. Uh, by the way, the unit didn't end its turn just because of the events I have on this map. Normally its turn would be over. For this reason, Wolfar is kind of not broken. Where Tenry was very broken at fast charge, Wolfar is a little bit more balanced. But still, Wolfar has tons of potential. With the ability to move a unit, or do AoE damage, or assassinate an enemy unit, Wolfar is everything that was good about Tenry, 
with some things being a little bit better and the overpowered things being nerfed. So Wolfahar is really a balanced Tenri back in the glory days of Tenri and definitely goes in the S-rank pool. All right, there's one more S-ranker we need to talk about, and that's Valder. Valder is insanely difficult to play to the point where even though I can compete against some of the best players in this game, I can't play Valder. I'm amazed by people who can play Valder. It's insane. This is Valder's groove. This is it. Spawn sword. That, that, that's all it does. But this groove at very fast charge is one of the best in the game, and here's why. You can use it to capture properties early in the capture phase, gaining an income advantage on your opponent before they even have a chance to react. Valder is even better in the DLC, because before, okay, you have a sword, but it will get killed by all the pikes. Pike spam is gone. Pikes have been nerfed. They cost a lot more now. So this sword is insanely useful, not just as a body block, but it can go and attack things. For this reason, Valder, who was already ranked number 5 in Commanders before the DLC came out, is even better, and on specific maps is one of the best commanders to pick. Now keep in mind, like I said, Valder, Nuru, Dioda, Caesar, these are all really, really hard to play. You might find them worse than your average commander until you get crazy good at the game. So just because I put it in S tier doesn't mean S is unbeatable. It just means they have a very high skill cap, and when you can play them perfectly, they're some of the best. All right, let's talk about Yoda's arch nemesis, Sedge. Sedge was very good on very specific maps where Sedge could get groove in time. But in the DLC, Sedge has been buffed. Not only are spears not a problem anymore, trebuchet is not a problem anymore, but Sedge has been buffed from very slow to slow and now will almost always get groove in time to use it. And unlike other slow chargers, like Tenry, for example, Sedge will get to keep Groove for the rest of the game. For this reason, Sedge is definitely in A tier. With all of the low health units like puppies and swords running around in this patch, Sedge will have a feast hunting them all down, finishing off body blocks, stopping those dragons who are hit by an alchemist and survive with like 20 health from recovering. Sedge is insanely good. Alright, Mercia was considered one of the best in the top 5 before the DLC. Unfortunately, without Pikes, she's not quite as good anymore. I'm still going to put her in the A tier for now, but that might change. The fact of the matter is, healing a dog isn't that great, healing a sword isn't that great, healing an alchemist is okay, but you really want knights and golems, and with wolfires running around, you're not going to build a lot of golems. So the fact of the matter is, Mercia is a little bit weaker, but she's going to stay in the A rank for now because theoretically her groove can heal tons of damage, it's fast charge, high potential for early aggression, and if you aggress early, you can get a lot out of it. You can start tempo, make her groove worth it. Alright, Greenfinger got a big buff. The Vines now teleport. That's big because before the Vines could be used against you. Your opponent could just sit next to them, and then they were a body block that your opponent could kill, but you couldn't. So they were actually protected by your vines. Now the vines can teleport. They can creep across the map. It's so scary. They're insanely good body blocks, give you great positioning. They could be used for cheese strategies or just plain old tactics. Greenfinger is definitely A tier, and I think actually underestimated right now. I haven't seen a lot of players using him. But you should play Greenfinger. He's awesome. Alright, now let's talk about the twins. The twins, everyone was saying, oh, they're going to be OP, we have to nerf them, we should only let them use one groove. But the twins aren't that good. Even though Orla's groove, Scorching Fire, can kill any unit, even a commander, the fact of the matter is, the twins are medium charge, so it's not like they get it right away. And also, the twins' area of effect is a little hard to control. It happens over time, so it's a little bit forecasted, predicted. Your opponent can get as much benefit out of it as you can, because you might end up killing yourself. If you use Errol's Groove, your opponent can heal off it, and there's no good way to prevent that. I'm going to put the Twins in B tier. Now again, I think they will get better when people learn to play them and can pull off surrounds a little more reliably. But yeah, the Twins are in B tier, because really all they have is the fire kill gimmick, which you can't always do. All right, let's talk about Emric. Emric was ranked the number six commander in the previous patch, and I think he's still sort of there. We're gonna pop him in A tier. He's still really strong, but not overbearing. 
Emmerich is pretty much the example of like a perfectly balanced commander. He has a groove, but it has counterplay. He's strong, but not too strong. I like Emmerich in this patch. I think he's a little bit better, but still A tier for now. All right, let's talk about Ragna. Everyone thought Ragna sucked until Shu started playing Ragna and dominated. And people realized that even though she has a slow charge groove, it does tons of damage, has kill potential, and you know what? You can even use it when you're behind. That's something that's really important. That being said, I don't quite know where to put Ragna. I think we're gonna drop her in the A tier for now. All right, let's talk about Koji. I love Koji, I'm a Koji player. I'm a big time Koji player, but I'm gonna drop Koji in B tier. Even with the buff, Koji is still a little bit too weak for a slow charge groove. The bombs are a little bit tankier now, but you can still block them, you can still kill them with a witch. You really have to use them as units with all these dogs and swords blocking spaces. Honestly, they don't do a ton of damage either. They're just an extra unit that you have to be smart with. So since Koji is really hard to use, and even the best Koji players can't really dominate with Koji, sadly, I'm dropping my good friend Koji here in B tier. All right, Merciful's groove is actually a negative. It can hurt you under some circumstances and doesn't help you win the game. F tier, no question. That being said, Merciful is such a gimmicky commander. Wait, we can fish in lava? We can fish in lava. Okay, S tier, S tier right away. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. Wait, we can fish in lava. Hold on, hold on, can, can we? Can we discover the, the secret commander that way? I'm gonna remember that for later. Anyway, um, we're dropping Merciful in F tier for not really having a useful groove. Elodie, sadly, um, this is a tough call for me. I think we're gonna put Elodie in B tier. She used to be in F tier, but she's a little bit better now because with more dogs around, she'll get groove. She can probably use it on something decent, or maybe turn the tides on you a little bit. It's a little bit better without pikes and trebs, but Elodie is still really weak. I might actually dump her in F tier. And speaking of F tier, unfortunately that's where Dark Mercia is going. Uni, forgive me. The reason is that Dark Mercia just doesn't do a lot of damage. For a slow charge groove that does damage, she does, quite frankly, a couple of mage heals worth of damage. It's true damage, it ignores terrain, that's great, but it's centered around her, so it's kind of hard to follow up. Being a healer is good in this meta, but being a healer at slow charge is okay. You know what, I've talked myself out of it. I think because she's a healer, and healers have gotten a little bit of a buff with all the swords and dogs, and you want to be a little bit aggressive and safer with your commander, I'll put her in B tier? So, th these two have been elevated from F tier to B tier, but... I'm not sure about that. I'm really not. All right, Sigrid. This is another stretch. I'm not quite sure where to dump our good friend Sigrid. She used to be an F tier, but she's playable now, so we're going to put her in B. All right, finally we have Vesper. When Vesper came out, everyone was like, oh my god, unbeatable. You can, you can put Smoke Shroud around the, the stronghold, and you'll be invincible, and you could surround, and great, wow, Vesper's unbeatable. But there's just one problem. She slow charge. You might have noticed a pattern, but the only slow chargers to make it to S tier are Sedge, who gets perma groove once he gets it, so he doesn't lose it, and Ragna, whose groove is so useful that she can come from behind, so being slow isn't that big of a deal. But Koji, for having a great groove, is B tier, right? Dark Mercia, for having a decent groove, B tier. Slow chargers don't usually make it to A tier or higher unless there's a very good reason. And Vesper doesn't have a very good reason. You only have one turn of the smoke, the enemy can use it, you really have to make it count, and they can kind of see it coming and play around it. Yes, it has infinite range, that's really useful, but it's like Tenry. It doesn't matter how good it is if you can only do one thing with it and you're not going to get it in time. At least Koji will have your bombs for a while. Right? So, we're gonna dump Vesper in B tier. Yeah, sorry, I, I have no choice. I have no choice. I think they might move to B tier eventually, but Elodie and Dark Mercia are getting dumped in F tier until we see some better plays with them. 
They just, they're slow charge and they just don't get enough bang for their buck. All right, this is gonna be our tier list. Let's see how accurate this is going forward in the patch. One thing I really like is the S tiers, aside from Wolfar, are stupidly hard to play. Yoda is ridiculously impossible on a timer. Nuru, you have to know the game like this, and gold save, so you have to be great at economy and mechanics. Valder is so difficult, I can't even play him. And Caesar, you really have to practice the positioning. Wolfar is the only S tier who's easy to play, but to play him at a high level, you have to know what everything can and can't stand on, where to move, where you're safe, because he has to get in melee range. He's a little tricky to play at his best, but he's probably the easiest of the bunch. If you want to try an easy S tier out, I'd try Wolfar. The rest are pretty hard. The A tier is also very difficult to play. Mercia Sedge, Greenfinger, Emmerich, and Ragna are all easy to play very simply, but very difficult to play well. Because uh, Emmerich and Greenfinger have grooves where they put something on the map and you have to think about placement. Sedge, you have to get groove and then do damage calculations. Mercia, you have to be aggressive and healer, it's not worth it. Ragna's really easy to kill yourself with if you don't know what you're doing. So definitely the best commanders are the more difficult ones to play. That being said, the twins are really tricky too, but... Alright, so for the B tier, most of these are hampered by their groove charge speed. The twins, because their zones actually affect them as much as their opponent. Sigrid is better now, but too easy to counterplay. Vesper and Tenry are just too slow. Koji, just too slow. If Koji was a little bit faster, he would be an S tier, no question. But at slow charge, the bombs just aren't that good. Alright, F tier is Merciful, who, let's be honest, the coolest thing he can do is fish in lava. Which is awesome! It's ridiculously awesome. I just want to fish in this lava all day. But it doesn't help you win games. Elodie and Dark Mercia suffer from... They're too easy to play around, they don't get groove in time, and they can't do enough with their groove. Elodie is not going to steal a golem or a dragon at high level play. It's just not happening. The only reason you play Elodie is to hold on to her groove and threaten those units off from coming near you. Dark Mercia, more or less the same. You get Groove, and then you walk around with it, trying not to use it. Your opponent has to attack you to make you use it, right? That's the threat there. So, I'm going to say that these two are only in F tier, because we haven't figured out their true potential yet. Once we figure out their true potential, they'll probably join B tier. But since no one can really play them well that yet, F tier it is. That has been the full tier list of the Double Trouble DLC from Sneaky Dragon. Keep in mind again, this is a lot of my opinion and some of the community's opinion. If you disagree with what I'm saying vehemently, please leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. You might even change my mind. And if you think you know who the secret new commander is or whether or not we're getting one, oh, I'm excited about that. I, I keep harping on that. Please let me know where you think they'll be ranked. Haha. <laughs> Alright, that's it for now, and welcome to Wargroove.